Everybody, it's Tyler at the Texas Cup, checking in team number 3847 Spectrum. I'm here with Mason and Zach, and we're going through this modified 2020 robot that they have, of course, going through the uh, power cell journey, the uh, intake tower shooter and climber, and uh, a great aesthetic that this team has too, all here coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker is a leading medical device company and is looking for those in first to join their team as interns or for a great career. Come join a company that will actively support you being in first at careers.stryker.com. If you're on an FRC or FTC team and you're currently meeting safely in person and have a functional robot, we'd love to have you on our Behind the Bots or Behind the Bumper segments. Go ahead and reach out to us on any of our social channels, on Discord, or send us an email at admin at firstupdatesnow.com and let's get your team scheduled to be on First Updates Now. So Mason, start us out on this robot here. We're going to be talking about the uh, intake. So talk to me a little about just some of the design process to it. Um, I really like, by the way, how the way you have this all integrated with the belt as well, too. Tell me a little bit more about it. Okay, so, well, first of all, when we're trying to get a power cell, we'll lower our intake here. We take it from the floor, as usual. And we have our two rollers here, which will take it in. And now our intake pops out, just like so. You'll see these rollers both spin about like this. Um, it's powered by a Neo, just a normal one, and it'll roll up the intake and straight into our index processing system. Uh, we have some supports on the sides, just in case, you know, to prevent cracking. Overall, it's a very sturdy and robust design. So as you come in here, uh, obviously we have these belts that are uh, pulling it in. Are these, are these are running the same way or opposite way? They're running the same way. Okay, so how are you preventing like uh, jams or anything like that from potentially happening? So that was actually a pretty big problem for us. Yeah. Uh, we had to work out a lot of kinks in that. So first of all, we used Teflon to smooth out the edges and make everything super slick and smooth. And we had to mess around with these pulleys and these lips to ensure that balls wouldn't get jammed right around this area. We also had a problem with using zip ties with the heads up here, but that was pretty easily fixed. Um, you can see we also added these side plates to ensure that it wouldn't get jammed up here because it has a tendency when the intake goes in to shove balls back here. But uh, we added these two plates and it just smoothly goes through. Well, let's put a couple power cells here. We can see that and then we'll start talking about the tower a little bit as well too. Right. All right. So I noticed uh, on this bar that uh, on this bar here that this actually kind of deflected a couple of the power cells as they mm -hmm. came in as well. So not only is this structural, but it's also deflecting the power cells. Is that right? Definitely. Yes. Also, when you take sharp turns, the power cells want to jump out. Sure. Uh, and this bar is one of the many ways that we use to keep those balls inside, especially when we have our intake down because we're still, you know, either intaking or we don't want to waste time when we turn around. Makes sense. So uh, to, as we go through this tower, uh, tell me a little bit more about what goes into it. Do you guys have any uh, sensors or anything that detects like if a ball is in or anything like that? Uh, we do. So we have an auto feed system uh, so that we don't actually just auto feed straight into our shooter. But we have a pair of sensors down here and up here so that when we detect that a ball has entered this area, there's a pair of pneumatics back there which will flip down and actually lower the back half of our tower. So the ball will just butt up against a ledge back there and won't auto feed into the tower. So we don't really have to worry about it jamming up there or it accidentally auto feeding uh, straight into the tower when we don't want it to because that sensor will prevent that. So we could just hold down the intake button and it'll auto feed straight into the tower and get us ready to shoot. Well, let's go, uh, speaking about shooter, let's go into the next Zach. You're gonna be talking a little bit more uh, about that. So talk to me, some interesting materials that you have on here as well too, uh, a little squishy. This kind of feels like a, a like a work mat or a yoga mat or something like that. Uh, so tell me a little bit more about what goes into the shooter. Yeah, so with the shooter, we have a fixed hood with a, a curved 3D printed parts, and we have a yoga mat with Teflon on the front so that the balls can route up through. And we have two accelerator wheels so that the wall the balls can get compressed uh, and shoot at a high out of shoot out at a high velocity. And the way we aim our bot, since it's a fixed hood, is we have a limelight on the front. And this limelight, it can detect the reflector tape on the power of uh, the goals. And so when the driver presses a button, it uh, moves the robot in a position to try and make um, threes into the, into the goals. So next up, we're going to go uh, into the climber uh, mechanism here. Uh, so 
Looks like a single stage on this, so tell me a little bit more about just the concept design and what goes into some of the innards of it, too. Uh, yeah, so for the climber, we have uh, an elevator here um, with some motors at the bottom pulling chains that raises the climber, and we have uh, fixed hooks so we cannot traverse the bar. Um, but we've got a really sturdy build here, so uh, the climber, yeah, the climber can handle um, holding on either side. Worst case scenario, one hook holds; it still manages to hold on. And yeah, we just we wanted to go for a sturdy build that could hold the weight of our robot, which right now is at uh, 121 pounds even. Sure. So yeah. Fair enough. Well, 3847 Spectrum, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us about your robot uh, and your team. Best of luck uh, here at the Texas Cup. Uh, and can't wait to see your team, of course, in future years as well. A great team in first and the community. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank you. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with a company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support FUN by joining FUN Nation. Click the Join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.